Hey folks, Randy Newberg here, Marcus Hockett here, and I think we're going to talk about whether or not you should spend all your hard-earned money on Utah, Marcus. Have you applied in Utah before? Never applied in Utah, so... so you'd be starting... I'd be at zero points. At the bottom of the point pool. The, the reason that I think this is a good demonstration for the audience is we get a lot of people who are just jumping in, mm -hmm. and they say... Man, I'm going to be at the bottom of the point pile. Is it worthwhile? And as always, the answer for me is it depends. Do you have an unlimited budget? Uh, no. no. <laughs> not, not unlimited. Oh, okay. No. The, without an unlimited budget, then it kind of comes to prioritizing how you're going to allocate the limited budget. Right. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, that's what, like, when I'm looking at states, it's, you know, you kind of like, well, how much do I have to spend? And then what are the benefits? For example, it's like, okay, if I have to buy the hunting license, is there something else I can do? Yeah. And so that's like something I would take into consideration. And then if it takes me 12 years to draw a tag, like, how much money is that going to be in the long term? And is it worthwhile? Yeah. Well, since we always do Arizona, and I know you have points in Arizona, yep. I can assure you that there are no over-the-counter opportunities in Utah <laughs> like we take advantage of in Arizona when we go down and yeah, that's kind of what it seems do like. the archery coos deer thing. <laughs> so I want to remind everybody, the reason we're posting this video now is the deadline is March 5th of 2020 for applications. So you have until March 19th. That's how long it's open to buy bonus points and preference points. So if you do decide, nah, but I want to start building points, you can do that. Right. But as a general rule for me on states where you have to front the license money and you don't have to front the tag money like Arizona and Utah mm -hmm. being examples, Nevada, you're crazy to just buy points. It's like right. same price to buy a point or buy a raffle ticket. Yeah. Put your name in the hat. Uh, the other thing, we want to make sure that everybody knows that these videos are heavily dependent on two platforms that we use. We do a ton of research on our OnX system before we finalize an application because it shows us what amount of public land is there. And then GoHunt has the service, the Insider, that I have the Utah module pulled up here in the background. Both of those go and use promo code Randy and you're going to save money, on X you're going to get 20% off. So then you, then your budget's getting bigger, Marcus. Right there, yeah. 20% <laughs> off your on X membership from promo code Randy, plus $50 of free store credit at Insider. And then also, I, I've got a bid in right now for a Wyoming governor's tag, or not governor's tag, commissioner's tag. That's someone who uses promo code Randy with the Insider by the end of June is going to get a commissioner's tag. But you and I have been working on this series of questions here about yep. <laughs> what's important when you are deciding if you're going to jump into the point game in Utah. I'm curious, like, so what are the species that you can apply for? And then is it all limited entry for all of those species? Utah has, it, it's weird. They have a different system for residents than they do for non-residents as far as what you can apply for. Non-residents, we can apply for everything. Residents, though, you, they break it out into three lumps. General buck deer, okay. which is on a preference point system. And then they can apply, residents can apply for limited entry elk deer or antelope, only one of those three. And that's okay. on a bonus point, hybrid bonus point system. Okay. And then residents can also apply for one of the following, moose, bison, mountain goat, desert bighorn, or rocky mountain bighorn. And again, that's on a hybrid bonus point system. Okay. But of all those things we just rattled off, non-residents can build points and apply for all of it. I take it non-residents are limited to, what? what's the cap? Yeah, there's so a cap, 10% of the tax. 10%, okay. But unlike some states, like our home state of Montana, where they say non-residents can have up to 10% of the tags, yeah. Utah carves out a pool of tags specifically for oh, okay. non-residents. So Interesting. you know that non-residents are going to meet that cap. So the general deer tag, you said, is that a non-resident thing too? Right. I take it it's not actually general. Like you still have to draw. <laughs> yeah. It. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Why Utah calls it general deer when you have to draw it? 
Is even as a resident, as a even resident, as a still, resident, yeah, okay, you have to drop, was... which is different than what they call limited entry deer. The big distinction is limited entry deer is just a very few choice number of units, like the world famous Henry's Mountains, mm -hmm. the Ponsagant, the Book Cliffs. Yep. Well, then their general deer is all the rest of the state broken up into all these units, but you still got to apply for it. Since we're on that topic, it's a preference point system. He or she with the most points gets the tag. Gotcha. That's the only species they have that's on a preference point system is their general buck deer, which is really a drawing. So being budget minded. What am I going to have to put in yeah. just to have a chance? $65 hunting license 65 for non-residents. And then it's $10 per species you apply for. If you're so lucky, as sometime in May, you wake up and you got a notice from your credit card that says you have a charge from Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. Gotcha. You'll get charged for that later on down the road. Gotcha. So, are, those, are those tags like fairly expensive when you do draw? I mean... Um, Elk is about 800 bucks. Deer is, I can't remember, 400 and something. Antelope is 290. But similar like, to I, other states. Yeah, pretty yeah. similar. I drew bison, and if I remember right, when I drew bison two years ago, that was $1,500. Okay. Which, yeah. It's a pretty good chunk of change. I mean, how many points are you going to have to accumulate before you have a, or you're actually in the drawing reasonably? The, that's the part that's probably going to discourage some people. Gotcha. Unless you just like hunting mule deer and you're, you're not uh, into the, the mindset of, oh, I got to have the Ponsagot or I got to have Henry Mountain. Mm -hmm. Their general deer system is on preference points and they plow through those pretty quickly. Okay. And those are mostly, there's rifle, muzzleloader, and archery. And they're pretty easy to draw. I think most non-resident units you can draw with anywhere from one to three points. So okay. the non-residents are rolling through that pretty quickly. So we'll push that to the side, General Buck Deer, mm -hmm. because when we get into the other ones, yeah, I can probably answer your question with one statement that I have 21 pronghorn points and have not drawn. <laughs> All the other species in Utah, the drawing odds are pretty slim. If, if your Utah timeline is, wow, it's going to be 22 years before I draw a pronghorn tag, would yeah. I rather be allocating that right. money somewhere else? Yeah. Where, okay, it's still going to cost some upfront money, but maybe I'll draw every five years. You know, one of the points that, here on the strategy article for uh, the Go Hunt Insider is they don't call it a hybrid system. I, I put that name to it. Okay. And so what it is, is we know preference point systems that the general buck deer is on. That's the person with the most points gets the tag. Right. Bonus points are like buying raffle tickets. If you've got 10 points and I got one, you got way more raffle tickets than I do. So your probability is a lot higher. Yep. Well, in Utah, what they do is they take every hunt code and they split it into two groups of tags. One they call the bonus tags, and then they call the random tags. Okay. And it's split half and half. Oh. And sometimes there's an odd number, and usually the odd number goes over into the bonus thing. So the bonus is really taking your bonus points and converting them to preference points for that half of the draw. And it's the first part of the draw. Gotcha. So everybody goes in there, and the people with the most bonus points get the tags. Mm-hmm which in high demand things like bison, like elk, uh, the limited entry deer, those, those go to the really top point holders. Right. Like we're talking 20 points and above. And if there's only one non-resident tag, it goes into the random side. In their regulations, it says there will be a non at least one non-resident tag. There's always gonna be one, and if there's only one, it's going to be a random thing, which everybody has a chance to win. First half of the tags, very first part of their draw is boom, everything is based on who has the most points. Gotcha. Anyone who doesn't draw on that part then goes over to the random mm -hmm. and that will be strictly a bonus point system of however many points you have is how many random numbers and your probability is better. But the fact that I drew a really high demand limited entry archery deer tag with only six points, when a bunch of people above me had a lot more points, shows that yeah. there is a chance. Gotcha. Yeah, no, it seems like in Utah, you definitely would want to start 
if you're going to do it, you'd want to start sooner rather than later. If someone's putting their kid in, like yeah. how, how old would you have to be before you can start? you got to be 12. It used to be 14 okay. quite so a while ago. So you want to get your kid in right in at 12 if right you're going to do it. Yeah, and <laughs> if, if you are going to put your, your kids in, uh, they have to be 12 by the end of that calendar year. Okay. And they have to have taken hunter education. One other thing here that they have listed that I want to make sure is there's a sequence to the draw. They start with limited entry deer, and then they do limited entry elk, and then they do limited entry antelope, and then they go to the limited entry once. They call them once in a lifetime species. Like I drew bison in 2018. Mm -hmm. I can never draw it again. If I draw my antelope tag this year, so mm -hmm. they start with deer, I have zero points. I'm just able to get back in because of the waiting periods. Gotcha. So they have a five-year waiting period. So I'm just getting back in this year. I'm not going to draw deer. I'm just getting back in for elk. I'm not going to draw elk. Mm -hmm. But I could draw antelope because I'm the one non-resident with the maximum points. <laughs> so if I draw, they boot me out of any remaining right. draws. All the once in a lifetime, I'll just get a point for all those. Okay. So if I would have drawn deer, I'd get booted out of elk and antelope and all the once in a lifetime. So you got to pay attention to the order in which they do it. We're trying to get to the, the question that you asked of, what are the odds? Because that kind of gets yeah. you to, where am I going to spend this, yeah. this money? It depends on what kind of weapons yeah. you like to hunt with. Yeah, also. so I mean, like, if you do an archery tag or, I don't know, they have muzzleloader and all that, mm -hmm. like, you have better odds of getting archery tags. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, that's kind of how it works is archery is easier to draw, except with elk. As a general rule, if you're willing to archery hunt, your odds are going to be better. Gotcha. And muzzleloader, your odds are going to be a little better than rifle. Rifle just about always has the toughest odds. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's chances for overlap. Right. So, like, if you draw a tag, right. do you have to use it that year? Or can you, you can turn it back in. Turn it back in. Yeah. The new rule this year is if you turn it back within 30 days, you're going to get your money back, you're going to get your points restored, but you're not getting a point for this year. I'm going to pull up here on the Insider. I know that you really like elk hunting, right? Yep. Non-resident. Limited entry elk, and you have zero points. So back to our on X here, this unit here that has good odds, it's 90 some percent private. Oh, okay. That would make sense so probably. So that's why that has good odds. <laughs> so with zero points here on the beaver, uh, they call it beaver east, most people just call it beaver. The early rifle hunt, 0 0.01%. 0.01, nice, all right. But then you get to the later rifle hunts and well, at, at least so you get 1.1%, 1.1%. 1 1 yeah. 1.7, 1.1, so. Okay. Do they get any better if you do archery? Like this, I mean, how much better do the odds actually get? Mm. Not so bad. the rifle unit on the beaver that was 0.01% is 0.04% for archery. So it's four, oh, four yeah. times better. It's really hard for me to answer the question when we get it all the time. Is this state worth it? Every state, you've kind of got your preferred species, Mm -hmm. what you like to do, how you like to hunt. There's way better archery opportunities in state X when you consider the likelihood of drawing than maybe Utah. Yeah. But maybe someone's a mule deer junkie and they just say, I love going mule deer hunting every three years. Well, guess what? Utah's general buck tags might be worth the investment. Right, but the way I'm looking at it is like, I, I don't know, I think I'd prefer to go hunt Wyoming and Colorado on those same cycles for right. mule deer. For, yeah, so, I don't know. So if you it's, look at this, all right, to build a point in Wyoming is what, 50 bucks for elk, something like that? Yeah, well, and you can get the general elk tag in Wyoming, which is yeah. pretty awesome. Every and few years. Every couple of years, yeah. So when, when I'm done with the, all those antelope points, I'm probably going to walk away from Utah. After I'm leaving my sheep and moose points on the table after I get done with antelope. Hmm. There's a pretty good chance of that. And I'll probably take that money, as crazy as this sounds, and I'll just go buy extra chances in some of these sheep lotteries or you know, some of the other things that, at this point in my life, have a huge amount of appeal to me versus another antelope hunt. Or, right. uh, so, And this is just my own preference. Like I was saying, if someone's really into mule deer, I think they would rate Utah higher than I do. Utah is probably the first state I'll drop when I start. Yeah, no, and that's how I'm kind of looking at it. It seems like it's basically the lowest on the totem pole of looking at the western states of what I would want to apply for. 
But if you do draw, the hunting experiences of all the limited entry hunts I've had in Utah yeah. are fantastic. Really? They manage by harvested age class and they like older age. Yeah. So there's usually a good selection of that. And they, in order to accomplish that, they restrict opportunity so heavily. It's not like you go in the woods and there's somebody standing on every stump. So. Yeah, trade-offs, I guess. Yeah. Anyhow, hopefully that covers it. And remember, Go Hunt Insider, if you use promo code Randy, not only do you get $50 of store credit, we want to make sure everybody is aware that you're going to be in the drawing for this Wyoming commissioner's permit that you can convert to either an elk, a deer, or a pronghorn tag. You look in the regs and say, I like that hunt code, you can redeem it for a tag with that hunt code. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope this helped a little bit.